The Java switch instruction enables you to select a set of instructions to execute based on the value of a variable in your Java application. In a way, the uh, Java switch statement is similar to the Java if statement. Um, and I've prepared a little example here to show you the difference. Have a look at this code example here uh, and see that we have a method called using if statements and it takes a single parameter of type int and then it simply checks first if the size value of size is equal to zero then it will print this text out else if the size is equal to one it will print this text and so on and so forth with two and three as well and if it's not equal to one two or three zero one two or three it will print out this statement down here. Let's try to run it and you will see that it should print this text here size is small because we pass up here when we call the method we pass a value of 0 to using if statements. And you can see that is exactly what it does. Now let us see how implementing the same functionality with the Java switch instruction looks. As you can see, I have created a method called switch on integers, which takes an int parameter called size. And then you can see in here, in this method that I have the switch instruction here, I have after the switch keyword, I have parentheses, and then I have the variable upon which I want to switch. And then I have a set of case statements and a default statement inside the switch instruction. Each case statement inside the switch statement matches a single possible value of the size per, um, variable here. And in this case, it's the size parameter. So in case size has a value of zero, then this statement here will get executed. If size has a value of one, then this statement here would get executed. If size has a value of two, this statement here will get executed. If size is a value of 3, then this statement will get executed. And if size does not have any of these four values matching any of the case statements here, the default statement will get executed. So this statement here will get executed. Now let's try to execute the switch on integers method and see what actually gets printed. I will first comment out the first method here comment in the switch on integers method call here and as you can see we are passing a value of 1 to this method which means we expect this case statement here to be executed and as you can see it prints out size is medium which is exactly what is printed from the second uh, case statement here You might have been wondering why there is a break statement at the end of each case statement block. And the reason for that is if you do not have a break statement here, then execution will continue after the matched case statement and on to the next statements down here. So let's try to remove this break statement here for a while. And what you will see now is that when we call switch on integers with a value of 1, then first this block here will get executed, but since there is no break statement anymore, it will continue down into the second case statement here, and we'll execute that as well, and then it will hit this break statement and stop, so the third case statement will not be executed. However, if there was no break statement here either, it would continue down the case statements until it either meets a break or it reaches the end of the switch instruction and let's try to run this code here this example and see what happens so as you can see we ran the code and now it prints the size is medium here and then as you can see it continued into the next case statement here and printed size is large and that is because there was no longer a break statement here so i will just put it back in just so that it is here for consistency but now you know what the break statements at the end of each case statement means. 
The behavior of continuing into the next case statement, if there's no break at the end of a case statement, is also sometimes referred to as fall through. And I just want to show you a final thing about fall through is that you can also fall through from a case statement and into the default statement here. So let's remove the break here after case uh, three, case value three. Let's call this method with a value of three and see what happens. As you can see, it matched this case statement here and then it fell through into the default statement as well. And so if there were no break statements anywhere here, then your switch statement would fall through or would match one of these statements and then fall through the rest of the statements until it hits the default statement and then it breaks out or it ex ent exits out of the switch instruction. You can switch on several different types, um, data types. For instance, you can see here, I have shown you how to switch on an in integer. Oh, actually it was an int, but you can also switch on a byte, on a short, um, and even on the values of the primitive um, wrapper objects for int integer, the short object and the byte object, etc., etc. So all the integer data types you can switch on, but you can also switch on characters. You can see I have made here a method called switch on chars in which I am taking a char as parameter. It's still called size, but now you can see we are matching against a character value rather than a numerical value. And so if the value of the size char parameter here is an uppercase S, it will print the first statement here and then M, second statement, L, third statement, X, the, the fourth statement. And if none of these values is passed in to the size parameter, the default statement will get executed. And let's try to run this. And you can see now I'm passing a character value of L. So it should print out this third statement here size is large and so let's execute it and see if that is actually what it does that is exactly what we expected and so now you have seen how to switch on a char data type it is also possible to switch on a string and you can see i have created a switch on strings method here which takes a string parameter called size and now you can see that inside the switch instruction here, the case, the values in the case statements are now strings. And as you can see, I'm switching on or, uh, on the value an uppercase S as a string, or an uppercase M as a string, or an uppercase L as a string. Or now you can see here I have a multi-character string here. I have XL as the last uh, value of the last case statement here. And so that is possible to match against as well. And let's try to call this method and see how that works. And we will actually call it with the value of XL just to see that it is possible to pass longer strings into the switch instruction. And you can see it prints out size is extra large, just like we expected from this statement here. Finally, it is also possible to switch on an enum um, data type. And an enum is a special kind of class. It's not really a class, but it's a class representing um, a set of constant values. As you can see here, I have declared an enum called size here. And inside it, I have four different constant values, small, medium, large, and extra large. And here you can see I created a method called switch on enum and it takes now you can see a size enum as parameter and now we switch on that and now you can see I have to uh, use the values that are embedded or defined in the size enum here uh, in my case statements so I have to match against them and
and um, let's try to call that and see how that works and now I just you can see I choose the value small from the size enum and now let's execute it and as you can see it prints the value or the text size is small which is to be expected because we passed the size that small uh, constant value from the enum here in as parameter to the switch on enum method call and so this first statement here is the one that will match the first case statement here and thus this statement will get executed one final thing that i want to show you in this video about the java switch instruction is how to have multiple values for a case statement for instance it is actually possible i've moved back up here into the switch on integers to add, it's actually possible to add more values here to each case statement. So as you can see, I can add the value 10 and 12 to this case statement. So now it will match the value 0, 10, or 12 um, of the size variable here. And let's try to call this method with the value of 10 and see what happens. As you can see, it matches the first uh, case statement here. And just to be sure, let's execute it with a value of 12 instead. And you can see it has the same effect. An alternative way of defining multiple values for a case statement is to use the fall through. So I could write case 10 like this and then case 12 like this and as you can see since there's absolutely no code for these case statements here they will match 10 or 12 but that will they will fall directly through to the statement here the first statement here so in effect these two case statements corresponds to adding extra case values to this statement now and let's just try to call again with a value of 10 to see that it actually does what we expect it to do and you can see it does even with the value of 12 as well you can see that it correctly matches these two case statements and then fall directly through to the next case statement here that is all I have to show you about the java switch instruction in java 12 the java switch instruction was changed so that you can turn it into a switch expression which basically means that the switch statement can return a value but i will show that in a separate video because this feature is still experimental and it's only available in java 12 and most of us at the time of recording this video are not yet working with java 12 and we don't know if it stays in. So look out for an, the next video in this Java switch statement series and you will see how the Java switch expression works.